Well, let's call let's call Elizabeth first before Ooh, the commercial Elizabeth, break. Elizabeth. Yes. So let me let me get on the phone here. So while Yoshi calls Elizabeth, as you'll notice, is we we are seeing that a lot of the more experienced people that we can get, the better the opportunities that you guys can learn from it, right? So uh, Elizabeth Cordero is uh, uh, moved here from Mexico and a successful real estate agent. Um, she actually was on a radio show a couple weeks ago that Yoshi, you should probably jump on with her. Uh, they did it in Spanish, so we had a translator. But um, it's amazing. She's come from house cleaning to home ownership, and she owns rental properties here in the Wasatch Front just in the last six years. And what's really cool is seeing other people's success as real estate, going from not knowing anything, they weren't born into it, to real good. estate investing so that they can help you the to uh, <laughs> build the lifestyle that you're looking for. So while Yoshi's calling Elizabeth, a couple of things I think that's interesting that what we're doing right now to prepare for the, the, the fall. Um, we're seeing the HVAC contractors are slammed due to the massive heat. Uh, we're seeing that sprinkler techs, if you have houses, rentals, flips, or your own houses, are charging a premium because a lot of them were not able to do work and now they're bogged down for, for landscaping. We're also seeing that um, there's less uh, contractors, skilled contractors in Utah just due to new construction on commercial, but we're seeing that some of these large, large commercial developments have actually stopped because a lot of people who would be working uh, in a, a large office are now working from home. So here's how this affects you guys that are wanting to invest and then just home ownership. Is we're seeing that the companies that are more progressive to have working stations for their team members to work from home, dual monitors, uh, video conferencing makes a difference with um, how to work virtually. And I know Yoshi's been an expert with working virtually. Maybe you want to share a couple tips on working virtually knowing that you've done it for a long time? Sure, sure. Elizabeth did not pick up the phone. Um, so what? just out of curiosity, what number do you have for her? The one that works? <laughs> yeah. I'll look it up in a second. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's going straight to voicemail, so I just wanted to make sure I'm calling the right one. Yeah, yeah. But We, we could call Jeff after the commercial break if we wanted to. He texted that he's ah, available. Ah, 0066? Uh, I'm pulling it up okay. in a second. Yeah. So yeah, I've been working virtually for quite some time, which I've really enjoyed. I like working uh, from home a lot. Um, I actually have virtual assistants that live in the Philippines that helped me on my team. Um, at one point I had three full-time virtual assistants, actually four, uh, three full-time, one part-time, three in the Philippines, one in India. If you think about major corporations, Delta, Sprint, Verizon, AT&T, when you call customer service of any of these companies, you usually get someone with a slight accent and that's because they're like a Brooklyn accent? Uh, more like a Filipino accent. Oh, okay. Yeah. Got it, got it. What's a Filipino accent? Can you I even... can't even do it. What's yeah. a Brooklyn accent like? Uh, you lived in Brooklyn. I, I didn't live in Brooklyn, but I lived in New York City. Um, you know, I don't know. It's, I, I, Sarah. Yeah. Sarah? Coffee. Yeah. I, I'm not sure. I can't remember. Sorry, you got offended there that I said you lived in Brooklyn. You're like, I did not live in Brooklyn. No, I mean, I, I'm not. A, no, I, I love Brooklyn. Yeah. I used to box in Brooklyn. Yeah. That's where I used to box. You're a Brooklyn boxer. Yeah. Um, so what was what's really cool is I have these virtual assistants just like I basically duplicated what the big companies did. They have virtual assistants in the Philippines, in India. And here's here's something interesting. If you've ever thought about hiring a virtual assistant, Filipinos tend to have the cleanest accent of these companies outside of uh, countries that already have English as their native language. Uh, when you look at some a country that doesn't have English as their you know primary language, the Filipinos tend to have the cleanest English, which is why most major companies will hire virtual assistants from the Philippines. Mm. So duplication is key. A, a mentor always told me, "Don't reinvent anything. Duplication is key." Everybody's hiring from the Philippines, Delta, Verizon, Sprint, right. Chase. Chase, I love it because I can under, I can recognize it. I just can't obviously say a Filipino accent. But I love when I call my Chase customer service. I know instantly they're based out of the Philippines. And I'll ask just because I'm curious. And they'll say, you know, where are you located? And she goes, oh, we're in our headquarters here in the Philippines. And, and um, 
There was one virtual assistant that I talked to from Chase that was so amazing with customer service. I said, if you ever leave there, take uh, my email down because I work with virtual assistants as well and I'd love to hire you. <laughs> nice. So um, you can do a lot from home, virtually, basically. You know, whether you're from home, whether you're our, uh, on the road, you know, we have a couple friends that travel a lot, but they're always working virtually from wherever they are on vacation. And so that's the beautiful thing about working virtually is right now with the technology that we have, you know, we can get so much done without having to actually be in the office. Yeah, that's for sure.